Tyler Canada's grocery marketing wars heated up again this uh, this week, and there's some interesting knock-on effects of that. Um, what do you make of Loblaws' announcement uh, regarding uh, freezing the price of, of no-name products? You know, I think I think what's clear, Chris, is that the retailers in Canada are feeling pressure. I think you know they're responding to the concerns from consumers that uh, who are worried about food inflation, worried about food getting more expensive. I think they're responding to this, this these growing calls to look at profits inside the their grocery retail chains. So they've come out. Uh, Loblaws, Metro have both spoke about uh, price uh, freezes to try and keep products more affordable. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, what seems to be driving it is this uh, need to respond, this need to be seen to be responsive to their their customers. And, and Metro was saying there's no news here, They're obviously trying to get into Loblaws' news cycle. Uh, Metro <laughs> was saying that they, this actually happens every year. Um, that was news to me. What, uh, what do you make of that? You know, it, it certainly retailers... Um, set their prices uh, every couple of months, they'll go through and, and make those adjustments. They've been making those adjustments a bit more often over the last couple of years to deal with inflation. Um, but, you know, different different retailers take different pricing strategies. Uh, clearly, Metro is, is being very transparent and saying that this isn't, uh, you know, no news, as, as you say. Um, but but really, it's it's about Anytime that, that we get a little bit more transparency into what grocery stores are, are doing um, helps uh, shed a bit of light, but but clearly there's some, some competition between Metro and, and Loblaws uh, playing out in the news this week. And what about Canada's grocery space um, makes this uh, a move that that is probably one of a very few that uh, groceries can or grocers can can make to help consumers you know there's the, we've heard, heard a lot about concerns about uh profits we've heard a lot of uh, different accusations people coming to different conclusions but there are some some simple facts that exist about the retail landscape in canada we have a pretty consolidated retail marketplace we have a very small number of large national chains where most canadians go and do their groceries and so there isn't a lot of competition between those those chains. We do see some of that playing out. We see some some tensions. We've we've seen it play out over the last couple of years around a retail code of conduct, a grocery code of conduct, where some of the retailers have taken different uh, positions, different approaches. Um, but by and large, there isn't a lot of competition. There isn't that same pressure to try and drive prices down that we see in the United States, for example. Uh, we also see you know Canadian grocers that are increasingly using private label brands. So these are uh, foods that that they don't make themselves necessarily somebody else makes for them but it's got a you know that president's choice that no name or that that uh, that that uh, pc uh, label on it that you know these are branded as uh, the store's own own products um, they're using those as a tool as part of their marketing campaign to try and give themselves an advantage to try and offer usually a, a different more affordable choice to consumers to try and increase that that connection that engagement with their customers um, it's it's one of the ways one of the tools that they use to try and um, make themselves more appealing to to their consumers but it puts pressures on other suppliers that then have to try and compete with the grocery store's own products for shelf space and for um, a, attention in, in the stores it, you know it really at the end of the day comes down to this question of um, competition of issues that you know this it, it's it's tough there it's it's tough for the consumers to to shop around that that option just isn't there in a lot of places in Canada um, but there's a, a, whole, a lot more attention being paid to it today and so when you don't have the the, the vibrant competition that you may have in other places um, in the retail sector these store brands or um, uh, private labels um, is that where there's, is there a different set of, of margins there that, that grocers can play with? Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, it, and that's, it, it's been interesting. What, what, one of the responses from the retail chains, when they've been asked about uh, their profits uh, and whether or not they're making more profits has been that as uh, consumers switch to cheaper, more affordable private label products, 
like a no-name uh, product at Loblaws, that margins for the grocery stores are better. So even though those products for consumers are more affordable, the profits can be a little bit better for the grocery stores at the at the end of the day. And that's effectively they're taking one player out of the, the supply chain there and, and they're able to put more of the money in their own pocket. That's not necessarily an excess profit piece. And again, these are actually more affordable products that are cheaper for consumers to buy, but it can change the margins that grocery stores make off of it. And so that's one of the things, factors that's playing out. That, that's a, um, should be a reasonable thing that there's, that this is a, a typically a good news story because these re retailers are offering, grocery stores are offering a more affordable product to consumers. They're just making more money when they're doing it. As we've talked about previously, the House of Commons is actually looking into grocery pricing in Canada right now. How do you think that this news and, and the, the knock on of it will play into that study? You know, again, it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be interesting to, to see this play out. We've seen a, a couple of different media outlets. A, a number of our, our newspaper chains have, have taken a stab at trying to to decide whether or not there is excess profit, there's this this greedflation uh, happening, and and by and large, people are saying no, there isn't. And and um, but the so the the House of Commons study is going to look at it more closely. Uh, they're going to be able to hopefully get some better information out of the retailers. But ultimately, the retailers want to be able to come to that committee and say, look at uh, this is an excess profit. Here are some of the things that that we're doing. So. I'm sure that the, the House of Commons study has prompted Loblaws and Metro and others to, to sharpen up their communications games. And, and uh, you know, that, that, that in and of itself is probably a good thing for consumers as they push some of the promotions and more affordable food products out. Tyler, thanks very much. Thank you.